I'll be brief, considering I screwed up the whole issue with having the, uh, the stamp and get you in and out of here earlier. But really, uh, this has been going on since 1670, and many of you have called numbers of times on when it's gonna happen, what's gonna happen. And just, just a sense of, of the way it, it, it came about, this came in with funding from the state after the Hurricane Sandy. The year afterwards, with 1314, is when the, the money was given, or at least allocated. 1617, we had a number of meetings, and then we waited. <laughs> and we waited. And so it started out as 600 homes, then went down to 450, and now we're down to 238, and the cost went from 18 million to 22 million. So it, it's, it's been a long process, not one that we had any control over, because I had said to him early on, just give us the money, and I'll figure out how to spend it and make it all happen. But this, this program and this project is really what it's all about. And just so you realize it also, is we're going to be, uh, we've gotten $12 million from between federal and state money to expand the civil plan from 800,000 gallons to 1.2 million per day. That's a per day number. So it's, we've been able to cobble together the money without touching the taxpayer. The U.S. taxpayers, you know, there's a fee, and we've talked about it, and you know, it's a $650 fee per year. But in that, and I want to tell you how that number, we got to that number. We base that number on the fact that a good number of people in South Patro pump at least twice a month, uh, twice a year, I'm sorry, which is about $600, almost $700. So it, I tried to keep it within range, and we have to do some shuffling around ourselves. But that being said, this is a, a great opportunity. Um, we have with us, where's Legislator Thorne? Are you I'm Legislator Thorne. Um, I asked to just give a brief update on, uh, well, on a few things. First and foremost, some of this had been started by my predecessor, and later the village took it over because they thought a better way of doing it. But we want to give a certain round of applause to former Legislator Kalaka, Rob's here somewhere. Give a, give a round of applause. When, when you're in county government, you realize how hard it is to even order a pencil. Uh, so, you know, that was a lot of work. I asked for a brief for the talk. If you folks are sending any county emails out, we are on lockdown. Have you not seen on the news? The county was cyber attacked with a full attack in September, and the federal authorities are chasing down the folks that are involved in it. So the reason I asked you to do is if you need a county service, please pick up the phone. Call my office, call the county uh, uh, controller's office, whatever office you need, do not send an email because you're gonna get it back. And we don't want you to think that we don't care about you. And to rest assured that the essential services, 911, fire rescue, emergency services, social services, they are all up and running through our partners in federal and state government. Uh, so we just wanted to reassure you that. On a personal note, this is a great project. Kudos to the village of Patra for getting it to this point. You don't have to be an uh, environmentalist to realize that we're dumping all sorts of bad things in our water supply. This is a great step. I certainly applaud Mayor Pontieri and his team for bringing it to fruition. And I'm very excited and will certainly be supporting you in anything you need. Uh, except for money. No, we'll, we'll try to get you some more money as well. He, he always squeezes you. Don't, let, don't give an opportunity. But listen, folks, have a great day. These folks are the experts. The county will be here to help the village in any event they need. All right, thank you both legislature and mayor. Um, so I will get into some of the more technical stuff. Uh, so first the introduction is obviously this project is being uh, done by the village of Pacho, it's uh, funded by the state. Uh, H2M Architects, we did the design work with project management, a little bit of construction and administration. Uh, and Pioneer Asphalt Paving was awarded the project to do the residential as well as the sewer work in the streets. 
so of course, why are we doing this project? These are four pretty good reasons to do this project, right? We live on this river, we like to keep it clean, we have our restaurants, we have our fishing spots, we have our you know, uh, swimming areas. Um, in, in order to keep these areas clean, this is really the best way to go about it, uh, as we well know. Um, as far as this type of a project, to be able to sewer an, an area by the, the village, uh, there was a pilot program back in 2015, I don't know if everybody's aware of this, but down at the bottom end of River Avenue, about 47 homes were identified the same as this group to say, listen, this is a great spot to be able to do this type of work. Um, and the village, same idea, was they, they put in the pipes, they put in the pump stations, they only maintain the operate these systems. So if you know anybody that lives down there, or if you want to take a drive down to the end of River Avenue, it's a really good spot to be able to see a good example of what we're doing. Uh, one thing you'll notice in that area that's a little bit different, we have green covers. If you go down there, you'll see black covers, so if you're looking for them, uh, they're not easy to find. They do hide pretty well. Uh, as mentioned, there was a year six, uh, 2016 version of this project. It was 24,000 linear feet of pipe. It was 513 homes. Uh, it was the same idea as this project. It was just much bigger. Uh, the funding was a little bit different back then. The, the you know, pie in the sky, we wanted to do as much as we could. Uh, however, time goes by, things uh, fall out of our control. Uh, my wife tells me a good story that the world is broken into two categories. So if you look at it this way, there's, there are things that you do and there are things you don't have control over. Uh, so there's certain answers that we have to give you guys that we don't have control over. But you in this room, we're selecting. Right? After all the ups and downs and the lefts and rights, uh, basically the graphic on the left here is all the homes that were identified as part of this project. Uh, to be identified, it's either to be, well, first off, it's to be zero to two years from surface, uh, to, from your home to surface waters, meaning your contaminants are making its way to the waters faster than other people. Uh, two, you have to be in an area where sewer pipes are already in place because those are the easiest homes to hook up. Um, and then from an extension standpoint, you can't be an extension of an extension because we simply can't put dry pipes in with the money that we have. So we have to pass homes, put in pipes, put in residential connections, and to do that, it adds up to the $21 million that we were given uh, by doing the 235 residential connections, 238, whatever it worked out to, um, in the blue. Uh, this map is something that we're gonna use as time goes on to try to um, have a live feed for everybody to see what the status of the project, who's hooked up, where we are as, as far as where we're going. A uh, great thing would be from here to be able to turn some of these blue, uh, reds into blue. Uh, that's all funding, that's all our, our people working for us and going out there and advocating for this type of a project. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, half, half of what we wanted is what we were able to do. Uh, from a schedule standpoint, like I said, we do have a notice to proceed. We, we started with the contractor back in August. Uh, we've been doing the paperwork, we've been getting our permits, we have a dewatering permit because of the groundwater issues you guys face. We have a Long Island Railroad permit because we do have to get underneath the West Avenue um, Long Island Railroad crossing. Those two things take a little bit of time, so there's going to be a little bit of, of kind of upfront work for us before we get the streets running. Um, however, there are, as I said, some areas that are not in dewatering and have a pipe in front of them, and those are going to be the areas that we look to do first. But at the same time, I've said it a couple times to different people, we're going to have home number one and we're going to have home number last. Um, and however that works out, we'll, we'll be in communication with you guys as best we can. Hopefully we'll be able to use that website to help you out. Um, but as far as the construction period, we have sewers in the streets, we have your residential connections. Once all the connections are made, it's the abandonment of your on-site systems. Uh, whether they're abandoned and filled in is one way. We are looking to possibly reuse some of these structures as drainage. Um, dry wells, whether it's a sump pump or a roof leader. So we're going to look to do those things. When we're done putting everything in, we're restoring the way that it is in kind, right? So be nervous as much as you want about your home. We're going to take care of it as best we can. We're going to try to put it back even better, if not the same. Um, we're looking at about an 18 month construction program. So we're about, one, about a month into that. Um, if we add these alternate items, we'll be able to keep going, but the, the look right now is we're figuring somewhere between 18 and 20 months uh, to be able to do the work that we're looking for, and then a couple of months to close the project out, which for those of you who are on the back end means that we might be out there doing surveys and just really wrapping up our record documents. Um, so roughly right now, figure we'll be, we'll be working on this through May of 24. Um, for those who have seen some of the, the drawings that we've sent out, maybe the cutout of, of what's out in the lobby from the lid standpoint and what the pump station looks like, 
This is kind of a quick schematic looking at the side of your system as to how it gets put in. Um, we are going to hook into your house connection that goes to your septic tank now, or cesspool, whatever you have. We're going to hook into it at the most convenient place so that we can turn and divert towards the new pump station. This doesn't show the scale of the length because it determines where you hook up and where the pump station can actually sit on your site. Uh, but effectively, we're gravity feed from the house to the pump station. This pump sits below grade. If you saw the lid that was sitting on the fake grass out there, that's really just that top little spot that's on the, on the schematic. Uh, and then we'll pipe up to the main that's in the street. As far as what you guys are going to be uh, responsible for is the pipe from your house to the pump station. Uh, if you flush something down there that gets caught, that's going to be on you to make sure that it gets its way to the pump station. Uh, as long as it's not something that's on the no-no list, which we'll be talking to everybody about. Uh, grinder pumps do a really good job of moving things, but there's no-no's. Uh, as long as it's nothing that falls in there that's on the no-no list, the village will own, operate, maintain, and fix whatever happens in these pump stations. They are not yours. That's what the $650 is for. Um, so that helps make feel make you feel a little more comfortable. Uh, blockages in the line from the pump station to the main that's on the village, that's them, you know, they'll be taking care of all those things. Um, so the access agreement has to do with if any of those things go wrong on your property, the village is able to make their way on and take care of it for you at their, you know, I would say convenience, but of course we're knocking the door before we start doing anything. Um, a couple of quick pictures of what construction kind of looks like. Um, the picture on your left is what the street construction is. These are small diameter pipes, they're as shallow as we can bury them based on frost protection or the utility crossings. Uh, but something like this is pretty typical. If we don't have anything in our way, we're about four and a half to five feet deep. Uh, and then the green pipe on the right hand side is what the lateral would look like coming from the main towards your property. On your site, you have the pump station on the left, mostly on the ground. I said this was a project that had a black lid, so that's the only difference. Same idea. Um, Little control panel sits on the side of your house, not so big. Um, and then the lateral for your pump station to connect to the main in the street would go through the yard. Um, looking at this picture, we're in the backyard. That's not going to be typical in this project. We'll do our best to be in the front yards for minimum disturbance. Um, and another, these are all from the River Avenue project. Um, and then we like to show our before and after, right? Well, black lid shows. Showed its face. For the most part, this is very typical of how that project went. Uh, and more or less, the last reason why you guys are all here is to be able to move forward with this project. We need our services uh, access agreements. Um, I'm glad to see as many of you signed them before we got here. I'm happier to see how many of them got signed while we're here. Uh, but really what it comes down to is we need to have that access agreement to allow the contractor to install the system and the village to maintain it. Um, I didn't put a date in there for when it needs to be done by because we haven't picked that yet. Uh, we're still in the, the baby stages, but there's going to be a point in time where there's going to be a date filled in there that says we can't wait any longer to know whether you want to be a part of this. There's all those 230 other homes that would love to take your place. So anybody that has reservations about the agreement, please talk to us. Um, this is obviously a great program. It's an incentive to the village residents. Um, there's not many other places that do things like this. Uh, once that's in, in place, I believe there's a super application and some other things, paperwork wise, that have to go through. Uh, and then once that's in place, you're in, and H2M Pioneer can go ahead and start working on your house. We'll talk to you, we'll figure out how the work is going to go, we lay the system out, and we'll pick a day where we're going to come in and actually do it. Other side of that is if you want, you can opt out of this pro uh, program. You're not going to hear me suggest that from anybody, but um, it's, always, it's always your choice. This is, this is not a requirement uh, today. But that said, currently that's, it may not be the case, but if there's changes in the future, you have a sewer pipe in front of your home, uh, you may be required to connect to that sewer pipe at your cost. So missing out on an opportunity like this might be a little silly. You always have a system at your house, everything is gonna eventually fail, so having somebody to fix it for you now before that is always nice. Uh, but at the same time, it is what it is, it's your house. And on that note, that is the end of my technical presentation. So thank you very much for taking your time to come down here and working with us to move this project forward. As you can see, we're all, we're all here. We're all happy to be a part of this. We're all happy to help you um, get through this. And 
Maybe in 18 months we all have another meeting and it's just smiles and handshakes. All right. Does anybody have any further questions for us? Timothy Nordberg? N-O-R-D, B-E-R-G. So if the power goes out, or the, the mentality behind these systems is that if your power is out, you're probably not using as much water as you would normally use. Uh, with that, there's a 70 gallon capacity to the tank, and each one of these pump station control panels has a generator hookup. So if the village gets an alarm that there's a power failure, whether it's in your area or at your house, they can go out, hook a generator up, there's a button that pumps the system down to empty, and effectively at that point, we would either I mean, we would know when the power came back on, but again, with 70 gallons of capacity, without running a dishwasher or a you know, washing machine, it's tough to come up with that much water. Yes, there is a notary here from the village. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll have the notary back out in the bar after this. Per home, we're looking at probably, I think we were talking four to six weeks from when we, when we get to your house to when we're finished. That would be complete access to those four to six weeks, everyone that's supposed to be coming to the place? Yep. All right. Yeah, not ripped up the whole time, but that's the amount of time it takes from start to finish. Gotcha. Okay, what do you want to say? How do you know the extent of what you guys are going to have to do with the power property? How do you access it? If you haven't seen the drawings of your individual homes, there's a sewers. Patchogvillage.org email address on the handout. Uh, we can send you the drawings in PDF form so that you can take a look at them. Um, otherwise, the simple point of it is find out where your house connection leaves your house. We're going to try to put the pump station as close to the front of the yard as possible, and we need to hook into your electric. Those are the three kind of points that we're looking at. So you're, you're responsible for from the house to the pump station, not from the pump station on. It's, it's really what we're going to do before we leave is we'll make sure that it's tested from a leak standpoint or from a running standpoint, so that when we walk out of there, we'll know that we have a fully running tested system. Um, I, the answer, the technical answer is yes, but it's it's just four inch plastic gravity pipe. It's and unless you run over it with a heavy truck, it's going to last. Yeah. Uh, I think he's been waiting back there. The, uh, a few minutes ago, the village put some sewer lines in down where we are on the Brightwood Street and Dock Street. Will those um, sewer lines be used in this project? Yeah, the purpose of those pipes is to be used in this project, and part of being within this phase is having those pipes in front of your house already. Okay. Uh, I have two questions. What days do you guys play out of your door? Are you going to be doing our meeting here on holidays? No, we're Monday to Friday, 7 to 4.30 are going to be our regular hours. Okay. And you can one house at a time? Or Best case scenario is, is they'll be working on clusters of a few homes at a time because there's a few there's, there's different sequences that are going to happen where it's if we can get five of them in done in this day then we go back and do the next step for those five houses so there's going to be some clustering uh, but the idea isn't to touch your house and then year come back it's once we're in that area is to get in and get out as fast as we can. Uh, the 
the pressure side of the pump station does have check valves to prevent backflow, yes. Yeah. They're all gonna, so when, once we make the connection, they'll all be abandoned or repurposed. Are they three separate systems or a cluster? Yeah, I mean, the, the, from the properties that I've seen, the idea is to hook everything up to one line to the pump station and then all the separate systems be abandoned. Yeah. So, like I said, the project started and it's going to be within the next 18 months. Our plan is once we know from the agreements and the clustered areas that we want to start with, um, we'd like to be giving a 30 day notice to those areas that it's coming, and then when we're there, we'll be knocking on doors. If not door hangers. Yeah, it might, it might be a little bit until we get the schedule in place. Did I hold last question? So, we would know that the project would be starting until 30 days prior, and then it would be four to six weeks after that, right? Right. Why are we responsible for paying from the house to the street? So, you're the one that's putting it in. What could we possibly be doing at the compromise? We're, we're the villager responsible from the pump station on. The homeowner, you're only responsible from the exit of your house into the pump station, so just the gravity line. Because we can't control what gets flushed down there, once it lands in the pump station, we know these grinder pumps take care of business. So we, we, were, we own it from there. Does that answer your question? Simply because at that point we. It's a matter of responsibility. We don't know what you'll be able to do with that pipe. Um, and it's really, it's just a gravity pipe. Like I said, it's, it's, it's not something that you can mess up. It's really just a matter of maintaining what goes down the drain. Make sure that there's no grease or you know, things that can back up the, uh, the traps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's it's a grinder pump, right? You don't want to send a screwdriver down there. It's, it's not going to grind it up. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a short list of things. I mean, the grease is one of them. The, the grease can start to play funny games inside of the pump station. Uh, but yeah, anybody that's going to be on this system, we're going to make sure that there's a list of those things because that's that's really the agreement between uh, the gentleman's agreement to make sure that you understand what the system is. Wipes can't go down there because they'll they'll shred and they'll attach to the pump and wind it up. Like say magic, but uh, without seeing a site plan, I can't really answer that question, um, other than by making the best decisions we can. Will the previous site plans be updated prior to start as a review? So the, the, there's a site plan that's attached to the bid that the contractor put together. Uh, like I said, if you want to see a copy of those, they, they shouldn't have changed much from the past rounds. But they're incorrect. If they're incorrect, then please let us know and we'll do what we can to to redraw it before we get there. Um, but on, on site, we're gonna have the utility markouts to verify where things physically are. Uh, we'll work with you if there's any changes that have to get made. And before they start digging, a, a red line drawing will be made so that they know what they're working on.
So right now, this is all considered an out-of-district connection. Uh, the way the code is written, an out-of-district connection is not required to connect to a pipe that's in the street. If the village at some point wanted to change that sewer district boundary and you became an in-district home, then the requirements like that start to take effect. So it's, it's not a right now thing, but that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, you make a right now decision based on right now. Um, there could be some, some things that happen later on that we don't have control over that could cause that in the kick in. Right here with the hat. Do you have a Yeah, the one behind you. Bad, yeah. So the, the program is only for single family residential. So as far as how many people live and how big of a house, we don't, we, it's hard to make that judgment. So the flat fee is basically saying that you, you are connected to a treatment plant that's gonna be doing what it does every day. And the hard life of a treatment plant means maintenance and upkeep. So it's, it's a flat fee so that everybody at a single family size home is paying the same amount. No, I understand that property tax is different than sewer tax. So it's not it's not all the way then that's it. Yep. That's it. If it's a single family residence, it's you know, you can't change the tax based on how big the family is. Uh, we can take that up on the legal side. <laughs> I can't answer that question. I do have a question in regards to this. Uh, our, water is, our water usage coming into our house is needed, correct? Correct. Why is our water leaving our residents uh, into the system and uh, monitored and metered uh, as such? Uh, Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm sure we could, but it's that's a lot of extra cost. It's it, the meters at that size would be a they don't work as well as you'd like them to. No, it's it, it's all based on Suffolk County Health Department standards. It's 300 gallons per day per home on an estimate, and that's that's kind of what we live with. I, listen, I, you, we can argue with the health department together. I'm not justifying the numbers, but that is what this is based on. That, the, what was the last part? That just the service level? Yeah, that's just your pipe from the house to the to the station. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> No, that's that's the flat sewer fee to be involved. I mean, they, again, it's an incentive program to be able to replace something. That's a conditional bill now, so that's like six fifty. I don't ever pay here. Then I'll have to tax it. No, I, I, I understand that. That's that's what the opt out option is for. Oh. Yeah, no, and that's where it's not required. If, if that's if the six fifty doesn't make this, you know, kind of a no brainer, then then yeah, it's it's up to you. Uh, 
Um, we'd like you to be available for the start of it so that we can work with you to make sure that everything's fine. If you're not home for portions of it, that's fine. We're not in your house for anything. So if, if the drawing is good and you're happy with the plan and we're moving forward, then no, if this, this happens without you guys there. Or, the, I mean, you can be there, but you don't have to be there. I don't need you there to watch. No, the, the point of that is it's, it's after the trap. Because you got, normally the, the trap is a different material, it's the cast iron, kind of the thing that's going through the wall, whether it's before or after the wall. All right, we want to hook up after that so that that trap stays in place because it's been there, it's probably working. Uh, but yeah, the idea is to just, it's after the trap outside the house. That's, that's the, the As long as it's one, it's per property. Whatever's on that property is per property. property. That's per property. We would connect whatever is on that property to the bus station. Yes. Um, you saw that on contract plans, or because I don't, I don't remember using that. I don't think that was one of our plans. It was either fill in with dirt and abandon, or repurpose as a drainage pool from for its roof or something. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe we plan on using concrete to fill in. So, um, first part of a good point, right? This is the, what I'm guessing is three different types of structures that we're going to find when we're out there. Uh, one is if you have a septic tank, which is a non leaching structure. Two would be the leaching pool after that, whether it's precast or block, or we're going to find a cesspool as the, the first pool that we find. Um, a septic tank, I believe, we have to fill in with dirt because there's nothing you can do with a non leaching structure. If it's a block pool, like cinder block built, um, I don't believe we can reuse those because we're not trusting of the, uh, the structural integrity anymore. It's a precast leaching ring. If those are available, that's the thing that we can repurpose, um, really with no questions. Thank you, Doug. Yes, Yeah, the, the idea would be to either roof leaders or some pumps to be able to move those drainage outlets into something that can contain it. Uh, to, to the mayor's point, the biggest idea of that is to be able to get the pumps that are pumping into the street out of that scenario. Um, not, not that we would put in, but it's, it's just, it's, if you have a sump pump in your basement, You'd be, if you have a precast leaching pool, you can read, you can divert your sump pump into that pool as a final location. Uh -huh.
So I, I understand what you're saying, but that's, we're going to have to talk about that a little bit. Say again? Uh, listen, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to put words in anybody else's mouth, but I do understand where the $650 comes from. And it is a require. you need to be able to make sure that the other end of this pipe is maintained. And that's, that's what that $650 is for. Again, it's, it's a matter of wanting to be in this program and making sure that it's a success. And I, I, I would love to have, I, I do want to continue this conversation, but we do have to take other questions. Right? Yeah, yeah. Believe me, I, we cannot have a personal conversation with right yeah, you. Okay. Um, are we going with questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That charge isn't just simply just because you're in this program. That's the village charge. We didn't make this up just for you in this program. That charge is across the entire village for any single family house that connects up just like River Avenue people do. So please, we've got to have a conversation with that. It really doesn't fit in what we're trying to do tonight. It does fit. Well, not no, it doesn't fit with this conversation. We can't control that. That's a village. That's a village. Um, I know we I know we're waiting for one more. Let's let's take this question. Uh, how, two questions. Just how long was yes. the construction like electrical and whatever you guys shut it off during the construction phase about you? And is that six fifty? Is that at round power taxes or is that something we're paying to afford as part of uh, maintenance? It would. It, I, the second question here is that it had, it's added as a line on your tax, right. so it's, it's part of your village taxes. As far as the swing over from electric and water, the electric swing over should be minimal. Um, the work that we're doing is basically cutting a wire, putting it back together, and then you'll be back online. Uh, we'll notify you of that. And as far as switching the sanitary service from the existing to the new, that's also a pretty quick procedure. It's, it's really a couple hours. All right, perfect. And Thank you. Is there an electrical cost? that's in addition to that 650 to operate that pump station? Yeah, the pump will go through your meter. Uh, they estimate on a single family house, it's about $4 a month for the amount of electricity that the pump consumes. With regards to the 650, is that fixed for how long? Uh, it's fixed for the time being. So, so that <laughs> I forgot my crystal ball. In the back? One property, two houses, one hookup, one cost? One property, one house. One, uh, one property, one hookup, one cost. But I was on there. If you had, let's talk about that. I can't, I'm not really sure what you're asking. Okay. So you have a single family house, everyone's paying 650 and I Yeah, I, I really can't have to cipher what everyone's saying. Are you saying that this is all for single family residential homes? Correct.
Yeah, yeah that's, that, you're gonna have to, we'll have to have that conversation. I don't know the answer to that, because if it's, if it's in the list, then we assume it to be a single family. If it's not, then we'll have to find out. Well, actually, I think it's a great answer, too. It actually says in the end, the multi-family homes, which are different than single-family homes, and then I, I, I might have missed one. Missed one. I know the single family is the 650. If it's a little bit different for a multi-family, we'd have to talk to you about that. Is, uh, yeah, then, there, then there'll be a scale for that. Yep, yeah, all the way back there. Keep Um, I mean, the, the hope at this point is if you're an alternate, that there's more money available. If it's not in either the basement or the alternate, then at this point it's, it's another project, another day that's, that has not started. Next, Steve. Yeah, PSCG was involved with the sizing of this. Uh, from an electricity consumption standpoint, they, they call this a 40 watt light bulb. You know, it's, it's not a big draw. It's, it's a couple of amps. Um, and no, they don't all kick on at the same time. It's, it's very random. So when they size these systems, if they say there's 50 pumps within a cluster, the expectation is maybe five or six of them are running. You're not, it's not gonna overload the grid like that because it's just too random. It goes on based on a level control. So yeah, it's, it's, it's totally random when that thing gets triggered. Um, the warranty is that the own village owns, maintains, operates, and pays the contractor only after they install it correctly. If the, so the control panel that we showed has an alarm system with a telemetry that has a call out to the village and their service provider. Um, that alarm is going to let them know that there's a problem at any given site and they'll go out there and take care of it. So whether it's a clog, they'll unclog it. If a pump that's not working, they'll have spares that they can drop in in place. It's a real quick replacement for these pumps. Uh, but yeah, totally own, maintained, operated, and fixed by the village. No, I mean, the, the, the plan is to abandon all of the, the sanitary systems. If you want to repurpose them, we can. To physically remove them is, it's really, unless it's completely in the way, the plan is to break them down and fill them in. So that you then have, you know, grassy area, do whatever you want on the top. At the treatment plant? Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the treatment plant has capacity to sewer the village, and there are some surrounding areas that we're looking to connect the NFTs patch on. It's, it's our surrounding areas. But that, that capacity is available. Well, what will do, what will be done with the money then? Upgrade the treatment plant as needed. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the treatment plant does it. I mean, I don't know if you guys have been on these. They live very hard lives. <laughs> Uh, no. no, this is this is simply being funded and paid for and installed by the village. Uh, the, the lid of it is bolted down, so from a falling into it standpoint, uh, that's taken. That's the way they take care of that. As far as you know, the tripping hazard is concerned, we're not going to put it in your walkways. Um, it's not traffic rated, so it can't go in a driveway. It's mm -hmm. To the same question as if there was a bush or a, a rock or a log. It's it's just it's a surface feature that we would hope that you know you guys would kind of blend in and make sure that it's not in one of those walking paths. It's on your property and it'll be located in a place that is coordinated with you, and that's that's what I'm saying. We're trying not to put it in a place that if you tell us that there's a walking path here and we can put it over, say there, we're going to put it over in another spot. No, I yeah, it's it's a it's a surface feature that you're right. It does stick, it does stick out a little bit. I, I can't I can't put it all the way in the ground, but I, I understand what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. No. No. How far into the curb will that unit be placed? A little bit louder. How far into the curb will that unit be installed? Said it's going to be on your property, usually your property is not at the street. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, uh, the idea is it's going to be inside of your property line, wherever that line is. So it could be five, six, seven feet in from the street. Yeah, something that's, that's typical. Yeah, on the frequently asked questions, there's a phone number as well as a, it's sewers at patchworkvillage.org. There's an email address that we're monitoring for these questions. The email is not really great. Say again? The email is not really great right now, right? Because the email is the Yeah, no, that's not the county. This is through the village. Okay. If you're on a street that has the sewer pipe already, then the homes, you know, that residential work goes as it's going. If you're on one of the streets that the sewer is being put in as well, you'll see that work come through first. Um, if the homeowner, if the homes aren't done at the same time, they would be done right after. You know, we're not. The whole idea of the scheduling is to try to stay in certain areas, so we're not bouncing all over the place. So once we're committed to something, the idea is to get in, finish it, and. On your street, there is a main. Yeah, so at that point, it's once we have the pump stations available, the, the sequence really is we install the pump station, connect it to the main, test it, get it ready to go. Once that's all up and running, then it's swing over for your sanitary from the existing to the new. And then once that's done, we get into the abandonment of the system. And hopefully by that point, that's the four to six weeks or so. And you're on, you're running, and we move on to somewhere else.
We have, we have a certain amount of flexibility. There's certain things that we can't do. If your water service, we can't put it close to your water service. We do have to have some clearance from there, but um, there, there is flexibility depending on your home. There is some flexibility. that question because others could, but um, yes, the contractor has insurance for where they're working. Um, as I said, we're not going to leave things ripped up and open. We're closing up at the end of the day. We temp asphalt the roads at the end of the day. So, That we're restoring Got to what it was. So if something. Got to be bonded. Yeah, it's a bo yes, it's a bonded project. That answers you. It's 100% performance bonded by the contractor. I mean, there's, there's, there's means from it if we like totally run away from it, but again, we're, we're restoring it kind of stuff. If we break something, we bought it and fix it. So you think I'm tested, you might, you know, treat the guy or the sprinkler system could be damaged, you know, so, you know, there's got to be some kind of environment. Well, that, I think that, I mean, the contractor has a so we, I'm not, I, I, maybe I'm missing the point of the question. Are you referring to after the project is over? Yeah. So then with that, there's a maintenance bond that goes all over the project as well. So after the project is over, there's still more insurances than the contractor is going to make sure that everything is what we left it as. That's what the bonding company is for. It's fully covered. The project is fully covered. We don't get to this point without that being in place. Like I said, I don't know the legal answer to that question. You'd have to bring that to the village and get it Everything is an exterior connection, electrically and plumbing. Yeah, that, that's, I, that might have been a carry from somewhere else, but no, we're not working inside the house. Everything would be tied outside. 